أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين Today inshallah we'll talk about the types of verses there are in the Quran there's muhkam and mutashabih this is a little bit of a, an Arabic lesson too Ayah uh, 7 of Surah 3 of Surah Al Imran. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Al Rajeem. Huwa Alladhi Anzala Alayka Al Kitab Minhu Ayatum Muhkamatun Hunna Ummu Al Kitab Wa Ukharu Mutashabihat. Fa Amma Alladhina Fi Kulubihim Zaygun Fayatabi'un Ma Tashabaha Minh. ابتغاء الفتنة وابتغاء تأويله وما يعلم تأويله إلا الله والراسخون في العلم يقولون آمنا به كل من عند ربنا وما يذكر إلا أولو الألباب uh, The translation that you find in the books is confusing and, and erroneous most Muslims are confused about uh, the meaning of of this ayah, but uh, I will I will explain it and I will show you from the ayah what the meaning is because this is how the Quran does it. The way Allah uses words, Allah suggests very strongly the meanings of those words. Verse three. Seven, Surah 3 verse 7 tells us that the Quran consists of two types of verses muhkam verses or muhkamat that's the plural of muhkam which are the ayah says the verses they are the essence of the Quran literally umul kitab now um in Arabic doesn't always mean mother it has many meanings. Ummul Kitab is used in other places in the Quran to mean Allah al Mahfuz, the protected tablet, where the original book of Allah is, and the Quran was sent down from it. But here, Ummul Kitab means the essence of the book. So the muhkam verses are the essence of the Qur'an. And there are other verses that are mutashabih. So we see that they are not the essence of the book. The, the second kind that are mutashabih are not the essence because Allah already says the first kind is umul kitab. If you want to say the mother of the book, well, they are the essence of the book, the bulk of the book, the main part, the basis. All that is all right. As to those in whose hearts there is deviance, they go after those verses that are mutashabi, seeking to create confusion seeking to create false religion, seeking to push people away from Islam, from true faith, and to invent beliefs that are shirk, or that are completely un-Islamic. So they use the Quran trying to create a false religion. And they use those verses of the Quran that Allah calls mutashabi. And they try, while they're doing that mischief, they try to interpret, to do ta'wil of those verses. But Allah says in this verse, وَمَا يَعْلَمُ تَأْوِيلَهُ إِلَّا اللَّهُ Only Allah knows the interpretation, the true meaning. Only Allah knows the true meaning. And then there's a new sentence, and some mufassirs, some scholars of Islam, try to 
mix up the grammar and claim that the new sentence is part of the first sentence. Let me read the new sentence separately now. And it says, those who are firmly established in knowledge say, we believe in both kinds. We believe in all of it. We believe in it. Both of both kinds are from our Lord. Whether it's muhkam or mutashabi, it's from our Lord. We are not going to doubt those parts that are mutashabi because we don't know their meaning. So that's implied. So we believe in it. Both of it is from our Lord. All of it is from our Lord. And then Allah comments on that. It says, وَمَا يَذَّكَّرُوا إِلَّا أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ Yadhakkar means to learn. Uh, some translators would say to get admonished. But dhikr is learning. One of the main meanings of dhikr is to learn. The Quran is called as dhikr, which means the book to learn from, the textbook. The master textbook for humanity is the Quran. That's why it's called as dhikr. And when Allah promises to protect the Quran, Allah says, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidhun. We are the ones who have sent down a dhikr, the Quran, and we shall certainly protect it. So only those will learn who have albab. Lub is like um, the internal part of the fruit. It's those who have true brains, true intellect, true intelligence, they are the ones who will learn from this verse. Many mufassirs say that uh, the second kind, those who are firm in knowledge would know the interpretation. Now, why would Allah say only Allah knows its meaning and those who are firm in knowledge say we believe in it? These two verses these two, these two sentences are separate. Only Allah knows its meaning. And those who are firm in knowledge, they say, we believe in it. We can't twist the grammar and say, and we have Muslims have twisted the Quran, just like the Christians and the Jews twisted their scripture. Muslims have twisted the Quran. And Allah told us that we are going to do it. And the Prophet told us that we are going to follow into the footsteps of the Christians and the Jews. Even if they entered into the hole of a lizard, we will go into a hole of a lizard. <laughs> and so this is one way Muslims are twisting the Quran. They take the two sentences and make them one. And this is how they read it. And only, the, and only Allah knows in its interpretation and also those who are firm in knowledge. There is no way the grammar would allow that connection. Because after that comes, they say, who says? Those who are firm in knowledge. So we have the start of a new sentence. Those who are firm in knowledge say we believe in it. Both of it is from our Lord. So those, the second type of the verses is also explained uh, in the Quran. Actually, the kind that is mutashabi and whose meaning only Allah knows has been defined and clarified in ayah 25 of Surah Al-Baqarah. The ayah 25 of Surah Al-Baqarah speaks of fruits of paradise where people would look at them and say, oh, this is what we were given before. Now, we know that things in paradise are not the same as the fruits on, on the earth. So when they say this is what we have been given before, Allah comments, they were given fruits that are mutashabi. The same word that is here in, in verse 7 of, of, sur of Surah 3 refers to the verses that we cannot understand. The same word is used for the fruits of paradise that we mistake for earth fruits. Um, can we 
put up the, the questions until the end. So what Allah means is those fruits in paradise are so similar that you think they are the same as the fruits of the earth. But you have no way to imagine the joys of paradise. You have no way to imagine the taste and, and uh, the joys that you will get from eating those fruits. So what Allah is saying is that that similarity is not real. It looks similar to you. It looks very similar, but it's not real. Those fruits in paradise are something completely different. And so there are verses that say something that Allah does not want us to know exactly what it is. For example, verse 11 of Surah 18, the cave, and that's, that's all in there, the, the verse number is in there, says that Allah put a seal on the ears of young men to make them sleep for many years in a cave. Now, is Allah telling us how he did it? Is he really telling us what he did? He's saying something similar to what to something we know. Putting a seal on ears usually means, uh, you know, closing one's ear means going to sleep. It is associated with sleep. We don't, they don't hear anymore. You don't hear anymore when you're asleep. So um, Allah does not tell us what kind of seal he put on those ears, and Allah does, does not tell us how he put that seal on those ears. So it, it looks similar to something we know, which is like putting earplugs into your ear. But did Allah put earplugs into those people's ears to make them sleep for years? There are no earplugs that make you sleep for, for years. Allah simply is, is just not telling us. He doesn't want to tell us. He's keeping it a secret. It is mutashabih. It sounds like something we know, but it is not. So mutashabih are verses whose meanings seem familiar to us, seem similar to something we know, but they are not. And the purpose of mutashabi for Allah to tell us about something only a little bit, not the real meaning. Like the spirit, they ask you about the spirit. Say, this is of my Lord's affair. You have only been given little knowledge. Allah has not explained to us what the spirit is. And when Allah says, I blew into Adam from my spirit, of course he doesn't mean that the spirit that is inside Allah, part of it went into Adam because we will end up right back into Christianity where the Holy Ghost is shared by everybody. He blew into Adam from something that Allah calls Allah's spirit. What is it? Allah is not telling us. And it sounds like something we know. It sounds like this, this wind that flows in us and makes us alive. Because the word ruh, spirit, sounds like wind. The meaning is related. But we have no idea what Allah's spirit is that he blew into Adam and into every human being. And it is certainly not part of Allah. Allah did not put a part of him in us. When Allah says, I gave you my book, did he give us part of him? No. So when Allah says, I gave you from my spirit, he gave us from something that he created that he calls Allah's spirit. Nothing else makes sense. If we would claim that Allah's spirit is part of Allah, we're back to shirk and being part of Allah. That's not the meaning. That is mutashabi. That sounds like it is the spirit of Allah, but it is not the essence of Allah or the internal uh, energy of Allah. It's not. It's just something that Allah calls Allah's spirit. And when people asked about what is the spirit, Allah said, I'm not going to tell you. I have given you very little knowledge about that issue. What is your spirit? What is the spirit of a human being? Allah did not tell us much. The spirit of people often is referred to as nafs in the Quran. Same thing, the soul. Now, what we conclude from 
this so far is that the other verses that are called muhkam, we should be able to explain them. Allah is saying you cannot know the meaning, the true meaning of the mutashabih. The meaning is everything else we can find out the meaning. And how do we find out the meaning? By reading the Quran. Muhkam means tightly fastened. Allah makes it possible for people to understand the real meanings of muhkam verses, which are the essence of the Quran, by tightly fastening the meaning of those verses. How does he do that? He simply uses the words in ways that strongly suggest the real meanings. Every time you read a verse of the Quran, look at how the words are used, look at the environment in which those words are used, look at the previous words, the following words, the previous verses, the following verses, look at the environment and it will suggest to you the meanings. Also look at other verses in the Quran which use the same words. And remember that there is a verb root or a word root that is shared by multiple words. For example, this is written in the hand. Muhkam has the verb root ha ka ma ha kaf mim. The Quran has um, many words that share this word root. Al Hakim is one of them, it means wise. Yahkumu means to judge. Al-Hikmah means wisdom. Al-Hukam means the referees, the arbitrators. Um, the meanings are determined by the word forms, how the word is made from the root. That's called the word form. And also determined by the way Allah uses those words. Not all those meanings apply everywhere. You can't take all the meanings in the Quran and, and then look at a word and say, this word was used in this meaning elsewhere in the Quran, so it must be, must be able to have this meaning here too. No, the, the way the word is used determines its meaning, and one word can have multiple meanings, which can be contrary to each other, completely contrary. Like Vanna means either to suspect or to have a speculation, a suspicion, or to be absolutely certain. So you have to look at the context and you can find out for sure which part Allah means. Is it certainty or is it suspicion? Allah created Arabic and only Allah uses Arabic perfectly. The Quran is the only reliable dictionary, as Imam W.T. Muhammad said. The meanings of the Quran are endless. Oceans of ink are not enough to write them. Allah is the truth. Allah is al-Haqq. The more often we read and apply the Quran, the more Allah will show us of the truth, of his own beauty. And as we learn about Allah, the truth, that attribute of him that's the truth, and apply those meanings, then we too, our souls too, become beautiful. And when we are when our souls are beautiful enough, then we are ready to meet Allah. And we are fit to meet Allah. Astaghfirullah al-Azim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-mursaleen, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, malik yawm al-Din. إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين. Now we can have questions, go ahead. Yeah.